go. Amen, amen. Welcome out. The second night of the youth rally. Yes, sir. I'm hyped. Uh, so we're going to be singing out who is like the Lord. Clap your hands and lift up your voice to Jesus. Amen. Come on. Who is like the Lord? Okay. Who is like the Lord? There is no one who is like the Lord. He is strong and mighty. Like the Lord, He is worthy. He is worthy. Stand up and give Him the praise. Who is like the Lord? Who is like the Lord? There is no one who is like the Lord. He is strong and mighty. Who is like the Lord? He is worthy. Stand up and give Him the praise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is worthy of glory from the rising of the sun until it's going down the name of the Lord is to be praised praised who is like the Lord there is no one there is no one who is like the Lord he is strong and mighty who is like the Lord he is worthy stand up and give him the praise God is worthy of glory from the rise, from the rising of the sun until it's going down. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Stand up, stand up and praise Him and give Him the glory. Stand up and praise Him and give Him the glory. Stand up and praise Him and give Him the glory. Our God is worthy of praise. Stand up. Come on. Stand up and praise Him and give Him the glory. Stand up and praise Him and give Him the glory. Stand up and praise Him and give Him the glory. Our God is worthy of praise. Praise. Who is like the Lord? Let's give God praise this evening. Amen. So now I think we're doing announcements, I believe. So let's give a hand as Pastor Scott comes to the stage. Amen. Check. Amen. And so just got some quick announcements for you guys. Um, after the service today, uh, Pastor wants a picture, and so if you guys could just uh, make your way to the stage, and so I know it's a ton of y'all, so we'll try to make it happen. If it can't happen on the stage, we'll go outside around the back, and we'll kind of get let, let you kind of line up on the hill, and then start work, layering the hill as much as we can. Not the, not the broke hill, because I, I need y'all to go home whole, right? But the heel in the back is more smooth, and so we'll do that. Uh, second thing is that we found some stuff. So William B., is there a William B. here? This is yours, sir. You can come up and get your wallet. Amen. A nice young gentleman bought this up and has money in there, and it's still there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so we are Christians in here. Praise God. Amen. And so then the other thing was this. This necklace was found. I don't know if it's yours, but if it's yours, it has a, looks like a dove on the front here. And so if it's yours, you can come get it. Amen. Malaysia, there you go, man. All right. And so that's that. So next year, youth rally. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if, you, if you're writing this down, it'll be June the 7th and 8th. Next year, June the 7th and 8th. It is, it's, we're going to keep it on this weekend. It'll be the uh, second weekend in June. Second weekend in June. 
All right, and so then want to do some thank yous, some thank yous to some of our folks that have been laboring uh, behind the scenes and all that, uh, making all this work. And I know, you know, it stands up and I, you know, oh, it's Pastor Scott. No, there's a lot of people involved in this that you probably don't even know. Some of you have seen. And so I just want to give out some names here, some shout outs. And the problem when you give out names, how many know you, you're going to miss somebody? So if I miss you, it's not intentional. Trust me. All right, so um, Drake and Thomas, they were outside grilling all day in the heat for you guys to eat. And if I'm not mistaken, they still out there cooking so y'all can take food home. So amen. So we had some servers and ushers. I want to just throw out some names here. Ulysses and Ashira uh, Tillis. Amen. Pastor Bobby and Zena McWhorter. Yeah. Uh, Madeline, uh, Getchy, Tanisha, Emmy, Pam, uh, and, and there were a couple of others there. Again, like I said, that I did not uh, remember, but I, I saw them come in and out last night. And so I was trying to remember everybody from last night, but it was more y'all than them. So I would try to remember y'all's name versus theirs because I know them. But if you were here last night serving or today and I did not call you out, it was not intentional. But we thank God for your service. Last but not least, uh, with the thank yous, I want to thank my wife. Amen, Faith. Miss Faith. Amen. <laughs> So, so you, some of you are, uh, are marrying age already, right? You're, you're getting there. And so, listen, men, I'm going to speak to the men. First, the Bible says if you find a wife, you have found a good thing. Now, ladies, the problem is you need to learn to be a wife. Amen. We'll just leave it there. Bow your heads. All right, we can go home. <laughs> All right. Also, uh, Pastor Tahero, Ms. Diani, we thank you for your support. Uh, they labored behind the scenes before everything uh, even happened, and so that we thank God for them and their leadership just allowing us to uh, have this always, always pushing uh, us to uh, just, you know, do different things and, and just even giving us uh, this ministry or entrusting us with this ministry. And so I so thank God for them, their leadership and all that goes on there. And so all the leaders and parents that uh, you, that your leaders and parents that bought uh, teenagers that you uh, bust them down here, drove them down here, um, all you online that may have sent them down here. We had a lot of people give uh, to this because they couldn't be here. And so I just want to say thank you to all of them uh, that, that gave all of you that support it with your prayers and any other kind of way we want to thank you for that and so we we, uh, we couldn't do it without you and so that is it for the announcements and so we're going to get into uh, the lineup tonight and so uh, well first before we do that we're going to take the Lord's tithing offering well offering rather a love offering you know we get so churchy sometimes we get the same thing tithing offering but uh, we do want to uh, uh, just take an offering. And so listen, I just want to encourage you. I'm not going to do a long drawn out illustration because listen, I believe God that we're faithful people and we don't need, I don't need to sit here and beg you for no money. Amen. Amen. And so I don't need to beg you for no offering. Listen, we're going to bless the man of God. No doubt Pastor Brooks has uh, come. He's helped and he's going to preach tonight. And so uh, well, this evening he's going to preach for us. And so listen, I want to encourage you to give the soul into the kingdom. Uh, everything that comes in again is going to uh, bless the king, going to bless the man of God, going to bless the ministry. And it's going to help us to be able to have another one of these. Can you say amen? And so we want to do that. And so if I can get if I can get you you, uh, y'all too, Elijah and Luke, if y'all can take the offering for me. Now that I forgot to grab my ushers early on, so amen, hallelujah. We'll do a song a cappello. We'll do a song a cappello. We got it. Amen. Hallelujah. Olivia said, I'm out of here, Jack. Y'all ain't leaving me up there. Amen. Amen. And so... Uh, th uh, just thank you for your giving. Let's give. Let's be faithful. Let's honor the house of God and so uh, and, and bless the man of God. And so let's pray. And so if we could, Elijah, Elijah, please bless the offering. Amen. 
Amen. Let's say we have a vision. We have a vision for this nation. Oh, yes, we do. Isaiah. Isaiah. For this land, we join with angels in celebration. Oh, and by faith we speak revival. Oh, where we near. Oh, where every knee shall bow and worship you, and every tongue confess you are Lord. Give us an open heaven and anoint our prayers this day. Oh, and move your sovereign hand across this nation. Let's give God praise. God, we thank you, God, for your grace. God, we thank you, God, for your mercy, your wisdom. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your truth. Amen and amen again. And so we so thank you for your giving. We do have two QR codes on the screen. We'll leave those up very quickly. And so those QR codes, they do go to uh, the Frontline Youth Ministry. And so if you weren't able to have cash on you or if you didn't have a debit slip in the back that you grabbed, you can give online through that. It's secure. And so the, the funds will be allocated. Just put it as love offering and it'll go to the right place. There's a slot there to do that. And so we thank God for you. The other, uh, the other uh, QR code there, uh, the Frontline Youth here, they have a podcast. And so, you, amen. Hallelujah. No, 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 y'all doing it wrong. Where? There you go. Amen. And so if you've been listening, you know what's up. So, amen. So check out the podcast. They are 26, 26 episodes in. And so, it's a, a, listen, and so you, we'll show you a little video here and a little bit about it, but I'm telling you right now, uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, do all of those things. I'm telling you, it'll bless your life. If you ain't got nothing to do, listen, stop. You can veg out on a bunch of other things. Put it back up, guys. Put the QR code back up. If you ain't got nothing else to do, or if you're just washing dishes or cleaning, working out, you need a laugh, you may be down or whatever the case may be, listen. Put it on. I'm telling you, they're speaking directly to your age group. They're speaking to the issues that you have going on, uh, and, and it'll bless your life. I, I promise you. Let's start at the beginning and just binge listen to it. It will it will bless your life, and you'll begin. And the cool thing about it is, you'll have the uh, you'll be afforded the opportunity to see their growth in this podcast. You'll be able to see how they started and all that. And then if you, uh, it may spark you to start your own in your church. You can do it. Another thing I was going to say, youth leaders, I didn't mention this in the meeting this morning, but I'm going to mention it now. Challenge your teens to give. We started a year ago, uh, uh, you know, and it's risky, and it's kind of it's kind of like, oh, I don't want to, you know, they ain't got money. They got money. Y'all got money. Amen? Some of y'all balling. I can see. I saw, I'm looking at feet. I'm looking at shoes. My mommy and daddy bought me these shoes. Go, go get you some less expensive shoes and give to the kingdom of God. Amen. Tell them, tell them hey, what that, uh, that other hundred you were going to spend on these J's, I, you can just put, help give me that so I can, get, I can give it to AIM or I can give it to the new flies that we got coming out. There's some more flies that I'm here and I'm going to be starting. And so praise God for that. Amen. And so sow into your ministry. It only blesses you, trust me. And if God can get it through you, he can get it to you. And so I believe that even at your age. And so, amen. So don't, don't uh, youth leaders, don't be afraid to challenge them to give. And so, uh, amen. God will multiply. And so we're going to begin. We're going to jump into the song service. And so if I can have two of my guys come move the pulpit here. And so we'll start with Newport News. Newport News, y'all can give a testimony uh, while they get everything set up. One, two, one, two. This one work? Probably. That's good. You might? Okay. Psh, even better. Go ahead. Check one, two, Michael. Uh, no, get the. Uh, huh? Check one, two? Oh, okay, okay. Um. Trayvon. Hello, guys. Okay, Nehemiah. Yeah. Hello guys, um, I'm from Newport News Church. Um, my name is Nehemiah Brooks. I've grown up in the church. My dad's, my dad was a pastor ever since I was little, if I can remember. 
Um, I think the main problem with me was that I always thought I can live off my parents, and I think it was hard, like, going house to house, new home, new home, because at that time, like, we were switching new homes, like, every four years because my dad would get called out to a different church or another church, and sometimes I just felt lonely because it was hard to make new friends after you end new friends. Mm, okay. And I'll, it was a very big struggle, um, and then that led to me sinning because, you know, struggle leads to sin somehow. I, I don't understand it, but... Yeah, and um, basically I went through a lot. I remember just one service, I think it was like four years ago. I forgot the evangelist, but it was an evangelist that came to Newport News, and I just remember I just laid down my life for Christ ever since then. So, yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Right. Ready? <laughs> Check Are you ready? Oh, um, uh, uh, I, um, yeah, so uh, with this song, you know, we basically talk mainly about AIM, which is our group, our teen group. Love y'all. Y'all are amazing. You know what I mean? Um, so, I know it is AIM time. Let's go. Y'all So, know. yeah, so in the song, we basically talk about that and how, and it's basically towards and guided towards any teens. Like, we're going to preach and change how people walk and talk and different things like that. So, yeah, that's the song. So, hope y'all enjoy. We ready? Yeah. All right. Uh huh. Come on, bro. I got this word. Look. You know, God's a plan for all of our lives. Doesn't matter how young or old you are, He can always move. That's why we're on a mission to move, huh? Word. Well, keep it going. Yeah. You can't mess with the game, man. Look. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, preaching on the streets and not mess with the game. You will not walk the same. You will not walk the same, huh? Ain't preaching on the streets, do not mess with the gang. You will not walk the same. You will not walk the same. Ain't preaching on the streets, do not mess with the gang. You will not walk the same. You will not walk the same. Look, ain't preaching on the streets, do not mess with the gang. You will not walk the same. You will not walk the same when you mess with us. Cause I'm preaching with aim, and we really on. Since God saved me from my sin, I'm really going. It doesn't matter what they say, we gon' keep it. Yeah, we gon' keep it holding. We gon' keep it going. Shout out to the teens, cause you know we growing. Jesus all I need, cause he always showing. Jesus is the king, thank him for his glory. All my brothers stick together, that's why it's always showing. Always the next generation, so we had a show. We had a show. Jesus is the king, gotta love him. The message that we bring is from the king that's gonna love him. Okay. Ain't preaching all day. That's true. We do it all day. Look, yeah. ain't preaching all day. Yeah. We do it every okay. day. Okay. Look, I ain't preaching on the streets. Do not mess with the game. You will not walk the same. You will not walk the same. Ain't preaching on the streets. Do not mess with the game. You will not walk the same. You will not walk the same. Okay. Ain't preaching on the streets. Do not mess with the game. You will not walk the same. But you will not walk the same. Ain't preaching on the streets. Do not mess with the game. Yeah. Not walk the same. Wait. Not walk the same. Look. Yeah. Tell you what you want for real. Y'all gonna run with the rock for real. I know what you hear when I'm saying. I'm saying I bet what I talk for real. Uh, here to get black for real. We run aim and squad for real. Uh, I got a massive pill. Uh, I got the massive deal. Uh, I got to give it up. Run it back and then I can't again. If I get it, no one giving a 10. This I can do see that for my sin. Still saying that we finna win. Wait where the boys was happening. Only know when you capping in. You know we ain't never camp a kid. Follow him to the day that I die. Aim was trying to let the arrow fly. Aim on a mission we do is for God. Ain't no way you can mess with the squad. Okay, we back. Battling. Yeah, you know we battling. Fighting niggas battling on identity is found in him. You know, cause ain't preaching on the streets. Do not mess with the game. You will not walk the same. You can never walk the same. Cause ain't preaching on the streets. Do not mess with the game. You will not walk the same. You will never walk the same. Ain't preaching on the streets and I mess with the game. No, you will not walk the same. You will not walk the same. Yeah. Ain't preaching on the streets. Do not mess with the game. You will not walk the same. You will not walk the same. Amen. That's fire. Amen. And so we're going to have Miguel come up and do some songs for us next. Give it up for Miguel. What's good, Spring Lake? Y'all heard me. I said, what's good, Spring Lake? I don't know if I'm supposed to give a testimony. Pastor Scott, is it good if I give a testimony? I got to get the heads up, you know. Um, 
Where do I even start, man? Like, even, okay, let's go back four years ago. Rewind, right? So, in life, I was from, I was, I'm from Miami, Florida, um, a little town called Homestead. It's like a little little farm town, I guess. Um, and Pastor Suspensky came down to um, Pembroke Pines, and because our church got shut down, and he was like, he told my dad, he was like, he told him, like, I'm sorry if I'm not repeated, so he told him, like, but um, I'm really nervous, okay? Relax. Um, but he told, me, he told my dad, he was like, okay, do you want to you wanna change for real? He was like, yeah. He said, all right, you got two weeks. So I was like, dang, two weeks? He just, the pastor just told him, all right. So after that, we moved to Jacksonville, and it was kind of weird because I'm from, like, a, it's kind of like a big city. So moving there is, like, weird because there's nothing. Like, before I came, I was like, ugh, I hate life. Why in this small town do I have to live here alone? But I wasn't alone. I had to recognize that. Jesus was there, but I didn't see him. I didn't, I didn't, get, I didn't get it. It didn't click for me. But four years ago, there was this evangelist that came in. He, he preached a sermon. He said, who are you in Christ? Just think about that for a second. Like, who... Who are you in Christ? Are you, are you a preacher of Christ? Are you a follower of Christ? And I looked at myself in the mirror and I, I kind of just stood there. I was like, who am I in Christ? What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? What, 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 what's the hope for life? There's, what is to, what is to life? What's the point? Are you just able to live and have fun and die and that's it? Is it gone? But no, I had to recognize that Jesus died for us for our sins so that we could have eternity as our home. We could have heaven. We could have, we could have it says in the Bible that the streets are paved with gold. Yeah. What well, gold? And we wear gold on our necks like a little thing. And it's paved on the road. Yeah, come, on. come on, man. But I can't even fathom that. But I broke down. It was maybe like that same night. It was like 11 o'clock. I was just sitting there and I was, I was crying like a little boy. It's fine to cry when you're dealing with God. Um, but I remember just sitting there and just like thinking, of, thinking, what am I going to do? And I just said, God, if you can change me, change me. I need the change. I need, I need your hope. I need your love to help me. And yeah, and then four years later, here I am now speaking to you guys about the hope of Jesus Christ. So, all right. But I know what y'all here. Y'all y'all here to listen to some rap music, huh? All right, y'all go ahead and hit, hit that first tape. This song right here is called "Sins Been Paid." Turn me up. Turn it up. We gonna have to blast that thing. Yeah, my sins been paid. No more dealing with the pain. Come and give your shame. Sins been paid. Yeah, my sins been paid. No more dealing with the pain. Come and give your shame. Look, no more worries. Cause I got the Lord, no worries. Got God, so I ain't in a hurry. God got me, so I don't take blurry. No worries. Now I see you all with the perk and trying to pop a perk and ain't really working. Driving to suburban, sipping and swerving. Trying to find life that really is worth it. Wait, you really mean that there is a God that can save you from hell that is hot? Yeah. You mean to tell me that there was a man who died for us so we could not? Yeah. Okay, so what do I do? What do I do? Trying to find this truth. I want to meet this man of the room. Die for sins and out the tomb. There's nothing for him. No sinning in his room. Takes our sins, he went up like a broom. Never trying to play because he don't care. Never play for keeps, so it ain't no fair. Not playing this game. Would it even dare? Cause I'm saved by God, cause glory must be fair. So you go change it, let's check it. No fear for me to put a God to the bear. Knew I was going, knew that I lost it. Didn't care how it was, didn't care what it cost. He found me cold, tired, and exhausted. Laying on the floor of my heart with the frost. My turn ground began laying it out. Let it tease our eyes all about. Till it showed me that I died like every man. Burn up with the shout, there was no doubt. Got me wondering, is this the real truth? Got my life in even in my own youth, eye for eye and the truth for two. So I got to him now, about to for his truth. And I hit to remember when I was hurting now. Out on the streets, out here to learn. People born like me and what they prefer. And the ring, holy God, don't think it's concerning. Sick of seeing pain in the mirror, you see you wanna beat me. Cause I'm free, just got free. Never has to offer that I feel to a T. Never has to offer that I feel to a T. Felt tough to carry through my highs and my lows. So all of a sudden, I had to be showed. Any, many, money, more. She says, oh, no, what's going on the ring, bro? Sins been paid. Yeah, my sins been paid. No more dealing with the pain. Come and give me your shame right now. Give me the pay. 
Yeah, my sins been paid. No more than about the pain. Come and give your shit. Let's go. It's good to live for Jesus, huh? I said it's good to live for Jesus now. Come on. God, that was a lot. God, thank you, Jesus, though. What you stop for? Come on, man. I'm ready. Come on. I'm running back. Come on. This song right here is called Confusion. I think I only sang this song like once. But it's talking about the confusion of the world. We're blinded by confusion. But not no more. We got Jesus. We ain't going to be blinded by him. Isn't it confusing to see how crazy people are? Okay, okay, you may be up there living large But how does it feel when sin gets you in the choke toad? Squeezing every bit of life that you can only ever hold It's a tight grip, trust me, thought he never let go Till I found Jesus Christ, he forgave all my sins, bro Thought I was messed up, too lost up in this world They say a girl can be a boy and a boy can be a girl I don't know about you, looks like lipstick on a pig Think about that quote, give a minute, let it sink in Think about it like this, let's say that you're a puppet And you're held by your strings by the devil Don't you love it? Nah, why is it now that people like to hide their sin? It's because you want to look like your smiles and grins Don't hide it away, give your addictions to the Lord He changed my ways, he'll make you with the world Let's go Are you looking for a way out of all this confusion? Does it feel like every day you're a walking illusion? Jesus Christ died for us, he put it all to a conclusion God wants to help you put to win all confusion are you looking for a way out of all this confusion? Does it feel like every day you're a walking illusion? Jesus Christ died for us, he put it all to a conclusion God wants to help you put to win To tell you the truth, man, I was on the wrong path Didn't like who I was, I used to put God last But I recognize I'm alive for a reason To spread the holy cruise to Christ Jesus Ain't no other reason Wonder what happened if we all died right now Will heaven be your home? Please tell me how, or will you be friends with the demons down in hell? Later, I'll change later like no one can even tell. You take little bits so you can get up to the sky when you recognize you're a little to a pie. Just get tight. Feels like you've been hit by a plane when all of a sudden you're in the lake of fire bound by chains. Bodies boys and girls sleep with any girl or boy. They don't understand the bodies like a temple, not a toy. There's a saying that goes, what you reap is what you sow. So don't act that's what will happen if you do a little more. You can you don't have to live life by my depression Or you don't have to be filled with hate and aggression Or you don't have to feel lonely, cut your wrist, bro Cause there was a man who paid the price many, many years ago This world is reminding me of Sodom and Gomorrah It's filled with immorality and trembles with horror The rapture's on its way, man, like a thief in the night My big question for you is, are you ready tonight? Uh, are you looking for a way out of all this confusion? Does it feel like every day you're a walking illusion? Jesus Christ died for us, he put it all to a conclusion God wants to help you put your in all confusions Are you looking for a way out of all this confusion? Does it feel like every day you're a walking illusion? Jesus Christ died for us, he put it all to a conclusion God wants to help you put your in all confusions Are you looking for a way out of all this confusion? Does it feel like every day you're a walking illusion? Jesus Christ died for us, he put it all to a conclusion God wants to help you put your in all confusions Yeah, give it up, give it up. Man, amen. And so we're going to have a video, real quick a video. Pain, 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 pain. Torment, 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 torment. Suffering, 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 suffering. Defeat. This young man was living a life of utter desolation. What could he turn to? He felt he had tried everything. His peers were no help, and there was nothing good on the TV. Was there any hope for him? In that moment, he made a discovery that would change his life forever. Somehow he knew it was just what he needed. A dozen
dozen episodes at his fingertips. He had soon filled his mind with all kinds of new ideas. About like believers in certain, especially when you're trying human to leaders. So a lot of the example that I just gave you, like, and especially when you're trying to their affiliation, your goals with as a passive guy, will be criticized. Right? That's a he was ready. Learn how to cook. With his mind refreshed and sharper than ever, it was time to take his whole life to the next level. The Frontline Youth Podcast. Who will you become? So if you're taking a shower with your clothes on, just put on the Frontline Youth Podcast and get you, get you straight. Amen. And so they are now, like I said, 20-something episodes in. Let's give it up for the No Folk. Let's give it up for the No Folk crew. Yeah. How y'all doing? Um, it's test. Ooh. Ooh, sorry. It's crazy. It's actually pretty sick to see a whole bunch of you know, you know, youth here. Um, it's actually really inspiring to see what you know Springfield's doing here. You know, the the team rally is it haven't it hasn't happened in a while. You know, um, but uh, my testimony: I was raised in church, uh, practically really born in it. But um, a lot of things happen. You know, I felt like you know I'm comfortable. I, I got too comfortable. And when I had, got too comfortable, that's when I started to dwell into sin. I, had a whole bunch, I was in spiritual warfare. And it led to so many, you know, just dark thoughts. Very suicidal, very angry, very bitter towards everybody, especially my parents. And um, I felt like there's no hope. No matter, no, no matter how many team boot camps I went to, how many revivals we had, nothing changed. Just, it was always empty. I felt nothing. And um, I don't know, there's one, I, don't, I can't remember when, but I know I had an encounter with God. And... He's like, man, you're getting too comfortable, man, where you are, you know? Like, you're always trying to run away. You know, I'm trying to escape where you're supposed to be. And I'm like, dang. So I made a choice, and ever since I made that choice, it's been life-changing, just blessings all around. And just, I'm, I'm grateful that I have brethren who are here who have the same mindset, you know? And this is what song, it's like a zombie. It's, that's what a song is called. Um, but to me, it feels like it's, it's warfare. And, the, and how you get hit is when you get too comfortable. You got to stay on your toes all the time. So um, hopefully you can hear the message between, behind this song. So, ready? Yes, all right. There's a piano. It's 
not me, it's not my family In your head, in your head They are fighting with their tanks and their bombs And their bombs and their guns In your head, in your head They are crying In your head, in your head Zombie Zombie, zombie, hey, hey, what's in your head? In your head, zombie, 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 hey, 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 oh. In your head, in your head, they're still fighting with their tanks and their bombs and their bombs and their guns. In your head, in your head, they are dying. In your head, in your head, zombie, 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 hey, hey, what's in your head? to the stage. Welcome Aim back to the stage. Damn, I'm short. Did I say that on the camera? Oh. All right. All right. Oh, there we are. See? Hey. All right, we locked in. Yeah. This song right here is a, a song that came from an album I made about a year ago. Uh, don't worry, it won't be released. You'll never get to hear it again. So this is this is this is for y'all only, right? Um, but I was in one of the the darkest and lowest parts of my life I had ever been in. I was struggling. I was depressed, suicidal. Like a lot of things in my life that were just. I felt like everything was going wrong. I was wondering. I needed a savior. I needed a savior. And I looked everywhere but God for it. Right? I looked to relationships. I looked to. Not illegal things. Don't do illegal things. But I, I, I looked everywhere, but what the key was to be able to feel the void in my heart. And it continually killed me and made me go down a darker and darker path because I couldn't turn my eyes to light, not realizing that the whole time the true villain was me, that I was killing myself, that I was trying to fill my heart in with so many things that were just deteriorating in it, making it a bigger hole that was killing me more and more. And people saw it and people were wondering, Ramaj, you okay? Hey, what's going on? I told them, it's all right. I got it. I got it. I'm a grown man. Don't talk to me. I got it. A selfish man, a prideful man, a man. And I had to learn that I, I can't do it. I can't. I need to hear, bro. Let's get started. All right. Yeah. 
We all need a hero. admit that I need a hero with that you looking at me like a zero see I gave everything that I had to this dream that I have now all I have to show is my man you said I wouldn't die if I went down this path promised that I could fly with the wings that I had but now I'm broken and hopeless living by emotion the healing never came you just gave me no cane try to numb everything but now I can't feel tell me what's your plane I can't you promised a life of fame all you need was my soul and everything would change but I'm still feeling the same Feel like no one listens I know you're the one to blame You took everything And all you gave was fake I thought that I could trust you But you're just another snake I know My, my heart, heart is too cold Think I'm better, I'm better alone I can't see I can't feel, feel I need My heart is too cold, it's too cold. Think I'm better I'm alone. better alone I can't see Wait but maybe the whole time I was a villain I didn't know it was me I was killing see Look I don't want to dream anymore i of scared of nightmares Just standing behind the door Remind me of every time I failed Every time she left Maybe it's too late to tell But I can't be forgiven The sins that I've done The witness are too far for redemption Don't tell me that I'm tripping When you live in the lie The truth becomes a victim When you scared of the light The darkness what you enter But I need a way out I'm tired of the sickness A broken hearted child And a man who's barely living but then I heard a whisper from a man He told me you don't have to be lost Just take his hand He offers peace and freedom and rest for the weary man But then I said I can't It's too cold I think I'm better alone My heart It's too cold yeah. I think I'm better alone I can't feel we all need that hero. Son, the whole world needs. And I'll tell you right now, tonight, if you were feeling like I was feeling, if you were feeling lost, broken, hopeless, if you had no other thing to turn to, I tell you tonight that Jesus Christ died for you. He died so you don't have to feel this way. He is the hero you're looking for. You have to turn to him. His arms are open. He's ready and willing to help touch and save you. You don't have forever. Tonight's your night. You gotta make a decision now. Or it's too late. Check, check. And let's give it up finally for the Spring Lake Youth Choir. Spring Lake. Got a testimony coming from Israel. Hallelujah! Oh, am I supposed to give a testimony? Okay. Yeah, I got you. Um, uh, for y'all who don't know me, my name is Israel. Um, I'm here in the Spring Lake Church. Uh, I was I was born in the church. I think I was like in Newport News till I was like two, and then my parents went out to Pioneer. Um, so the, my whole life, I've been surrounded by uh, by Christian things, by church stuff. I even my parents even went out uh, on a mission thing. So we were missionaries for a while, and the whole time, you know, I, I believed in God. You know, because my parents believed in God, and so, you know, I'm following everything that they do, so I believe them wholeheartedly. You know, when you're like five, you believe everything that people tell you, so, you know, that was, that was what I was in. And so I continued kind of living that life for a long time, but at some point I became sort of like keenly aware that that, that was the case, that when you're a kid, right, you believe everything your parents say. But now that I'm older, right, 
I was like beginning to think, well, maybe that's just my parents' thing, you know, because I don't want to be just stuck here doing this forever just because that's what they told me when I was a kid. And so now I was like, I was like, maybe it's not for me. Maybe that was just my parents. Maybe I, I had to come to believe my own thing now. But uh, someone, someone, like people didn't know that, you know, because I'm still in church presenting my whole life as a Christian person. So people, ministry leaders, nobody knew like what's going on in my head. So somehow I ended up like in song service, right? I'm on the stage doing, I'm like singing and whatever. And I'm like, man, now I'm stuck doing this thing. And I really can't like show people that I'm struggling now. I'm, I'm scared to, so I'm doing all this. And now I, I still pray, right? I still pray just in case, right? Just in case, cause I don't want God to be like, you're in song service, you don't even pray, right? So. <laughs> So I'm, I'm, I'm still praying, but I'm still like trying to find my own way. And so at some point I, I had to realize, I was like, God, it's not, it's not enough for you to be real to my parents. It's not enough for me to do just because I'm scared, <laughs> just because I'm scared of what other people in the church might think of me. At some point I was like, you have to show yourself to me in some kind of way, because otherwise this ain't going to work. And you know, I'm, I'm terrified. I'm, I, I'm terrified to, to, to show anybody that I'm going through all this stuff in my head. But through a series of things, through a bunch of situations that went on, you know, God made himself evident to me. God showed his love, showed his light to me and made it undeniable that God was real and that God was present over my life and Lord over my life. And so I decided in 2020 that I was going to give my life to God. And I haven't gone back since. I've been following God. But I just want to say that if you're out here and you're like, oh, you know, I, I'm doing these church stuff. I'm even in ministry, you know. I, I, like, you, you can't rely on that. That can't be the whole sal your whole salvation. You have to find, God has to become real to you. And if he's not, then you have to seek him out. And that's all I got to say.
You'll finish what you started. God, you have never failed. You won't start with me. Present in every cell. Patient in every heartache. God, you have never failed. Amen. Give a round of applause for everybody today. Amen. Young strong backs. Amen. Give it up for the young strong backs. Amen. And we're about to have another young, strong man of God come and give us the word of God. Let's give God praise if Pastor Brooks comes. Check, one, two. Oh, man. Oh. Aim time. Front line? I would name all the other ones. I don't know them. (laughs) But it's it's good to see this. Uh, I can't tell you how elated I am, not only to be here, uh, but to see this. You know, over my years of being saved, I've learned to to enjoy things. Because sometimes we can be so in it that we don't get to actually enjoy what God is doing. And I encourage y'all, you need to enjoy what God is doing. Listen, this, is, this isn't happening everywhere. You're not seeing this on the news. This isn't something that's just, oh, run of the mill. This, oh, no, no, listen, this is special here. This is special here. And, and I encourage you, every youth in here, every youth leader in here, enjoy this moment. Because one day y'all will be like me. <laughs> Look, you're like, mm, no, 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 you. <laughs> one day you'll be older. I remember when I got saved, I was 19. I ain't 19 no more. <laughs> and so again, count it a privilege. Just want to thank Pastor Scott, Pastor Tijero, the staff here, Spring Lake. Thank you for the invitation. It's my, this is my honor and my joy. Uh, I work with the youth in my church, and so this is my, this is my joy here. And so uh, we're going to believe God this, this, this afternoon. Amen. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, if you have your Bibles. 1 Samuel chapter 17, we're going to look at a very familiar portion of scripture this, this afternoon, uh, but 1 Samuel chapter 34, or 1 Samuel 17, 34. You know, when, uh, when I was living in Portsmouth, uh, we lived in a house, and I can remember walking outside my house to cut the grass, and so uh, not one thing that I liked to do, but I had to do, amen, so Got cut the grass, and I got it looking pretty good and low. And I remember going out maybe a day or two later, and outside there was a dandelion that had just popped up in my yard. And and now, the reason I have to, the reason why I noticed it is because I have allergies. And if anybody has allergies in here, you know exactly what I'm talking about when you start seeing dandelion dandelions and start seeing yellow. You start realizing what's about to take place. Come on, somebody. And I said to myself, dandelion, where did you come from? Where did you come from? Why are you here intruding on my yard? There were no signs of this plant growing in my yard. And then I came to this thought. 
The sprouting of that dandelion means that outward showings stem from inward workings. Oh my gosh, I'm getting excited now. That what I saw on the outside in that dandelion actually all started from the unseen. That the breakthrough part of it was just the product. But I wasn't seeing how the product was being done. You, you with me? The dandelion was going to impact my life because I have allergies. It's going to have an effect on me. But it all stems from what was happening in the ground, what I couldn't see. Now has come to the forefront to impact my life. Ladies and gentlemen, you were created to make impact within your generation. God has called the young to touch this world in a way that would turn the young and old to Jesus Christ. But if you're going to have public impact, listen to me clearly this afternoon. If you are going to have public impact, it first has to start in the private. In other words, it first has to start when nobody's looking. It does, you don't have public impact because you're in a ministry and you do things. Before you ever got to that ministry, God was already impacting you. God was already working in you, much like this dandelion. Something was already happening, and I just got a chance to see the product. If you're going to make impact publicly, you first have to be impacted privately. You're with me. And that's what we're going to look at. In our text, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 through 35, the Bible tells us this. Now, before I read this scripture, some of you have heard me preach and some of you have not. For those who have not, to, listen to me, this is not a library. Huh? I, I said this is not a library. This, this, is, this isn't a, shh, don't get too excited for Jesus, shh. So I better hear some amens. That's right. Hallelujah. Preach that, brother. Yes. Yes, that's me. Yes, Lord, that's me. This ain't no library. Have me doing all the work today. Uh-uh. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 and 35. The Bible says this. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear I, and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. And we'll stop there. Church, help me pray. Father in heaven, I thank you. I give you all the praise and glory, God, for each and every soul here. God, help us, God, this afternoon. And God, I pray as we are stemming to make public impact, that first and foremost, we would be impacted privately. That God, you would deal with us in the secret places of life. And I thank you, God, for your grace. And I thank you for your power. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and every youth up in here said, Amen. Amen. From private to public, if you're taking notes, from private to to public. Let's look firstly, amen, and when no one watched. The armies of God in our text, amen, are going into battle with the Philistines. We know that in this story they are facing the giants, especially one named Goliath. He has chastised them, amen, the people of God for 40 days, 40 nights. The armies are scared and unwilling to engage the enemy. David comes along, asks about the giant, and is told, you can't do this. You can't go against the man Goliath and look at David's response. But David said to Saul, our text, your servant used to keep the sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and, a, and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him, struck him, and delivered it out of his mouth. What David is telling King Saul is this. You weren't there when the lion and the bear came. Nobody saw when I had to fight for my father's sheep. 
You weren't there when I saw victories over these enemies. See, David shows us that what, uh, what private impact looks like. It doesn't need people looking. David, amen, fought for those sheep because he saw, amen, that he was, this was his value. This is what he had, and what he had he was willing to fight for no matter who was around and who wasn't around. See, this has nothing to do with who's watching, but more so it's about doing right in the moment when you can do wrong. What I'm saying this afternoon is this, is that there are battles that you're going to fight that nobody is going to see. There are lions and bears in your life, amen, that are trying to take away what's valuable to you, your peace, amen, your stability, your mindset, amen, your joy. We can go on and on. But if you're going to have public, amen, impact, first you have to deal with the lions and bears privately. Oh, my gosh. You got to deal with the lions and bears privately. The most important impact will first be killing those lions and bears in your life. Again, it's the battle that nobody sees. It's in the private moments of life. It's going to pray when no one's around. It's rejecting the culture of sexual sin when it presents itself at your school. It's fighting past evil desires of the flesh when nobody is looking. Your bear and lion can be mind battles, self-hatred, bitterness, amen. The list can go on and on, and you have to fight those things in private. Listen to me, you're going to have to fight when nobody, it's easy to fight when everybody's cheering and clapping for you and rooting for you and thank God for it. But what about when you go home? When the claps stop. I so enjoyed the music over the past two days, and I thank God for it. But one day that music stops. <laughs> and we're here, listen to me, all of us here, we're going back home. And we're going back home to some lions and bears. Come on, somebody. I know you don't want to talk about it. I know you don't want nobody to know, but God knows. And those are the things, amen, you're going to have to fight. Those are the things that you're going to have to battle. But if you would let God impact you in those in moments, in those opportunities, you can not only have impact privately, but you can have it publicly. We're going to get to it. Remember, the bear and lion were both after the same thing, the sheep, the things Listen to me, that you go through the struggles in life, they have an aim, they have a target, they are after something. You're not struggling just because it has an aim, it wants to take something, it wants you to refrain from doing something. If you have different things going on that cause you to fear, how many know fear is not a mover but a stopper? And what begins to happen is you begin to stop when you're afraid. Come on somebody. You begin to stop when fear begins to grip your heart. And that can be a struggle. That can be your lion and the bear. But you got to think about what is fear stopping you from? Making impact. Every struggle has a goal. Hell has a goal. It is trying to destroy and it's trying to take. They have an aim. See, mind battles are after your peace and stability. Sickness is after your faith and trust. And the list can go on and on and on. This is why private impact is so important, because if you can have private impact, it will build confidence in the God of heaven. It will solidify faith within your soul that, God, you can move. How can I know that God can move? Because he's moved within me. How can I proclaim that God has all strength and all power? Because I've witnessed it. Because I've experienced it. Because I have seen it. I've been impacted privately. That's how I know. Matthew chapter 6, verse 3 through 4 tells us this. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. 
so that your giving may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Now, I know the context is giving, but it speaks to a bigger principle of doing things in obscurity. What you conquer in the secret matters. Breakthroughs in the secret matter. When nobody, when nobody knows, those moments matter. Psalm 42, verse 5 through 7 tells us this. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall uh, praise him again. My salvation and my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and from Hermon and from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to the deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. Think with me here about this psalm. David is in a fight with who? Himself. He's talking to him. And what he is saying is, heart, why are you disconnected from the mind? What's going on within you? What's happening to you? Why aren't you getting this? Why aren't you not enjoying the worship? Why are you asleep? What's happening to you, heart? Because his mind knows, I got to serve God. I got to be here. I need God. But his heart is like, whatever. He's in turmoil with himself. It is in these spots. He's by himself battling and wrestling. And I know many of you find yourself right here. Wrestling and battling. But in these moments... Whatever happens in that battle will steal the course of the rest of your life. But he says these powerful words. He says, I'm going to stay under the waves and under your billows. What he, what he is saying ultimately is, I'm not going nowhere, though. Yeah, I'm struggling within myself. Yeah, I'm struggling to figure this out, but I'm not going to leave God. I'm going to wait on God. Come on, somebody. I'm going to wait till God impacts me. I'm going to wait till he, you, you with me. I'm going to wait till he revives me. I'm going to wait, amen, till my joy is restored. I'm going to wait until, amen, my peace is back. I'm not going to the left. I'm not going to the right. I'm just going to stand here and wait for God's grace to roll over me. And in that moment, you'll have impact privately. With that being said, let's look secondly at confidence for the new. Private victories create a mindset, a confidence in whatever he would face. David had a confidence. How do I know this? Verse 36 of our main text. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. His experience gave him a certain outlook towards the next challenge, towards the next issue. It built something in David, but it started with the same outlook at Goliath that he had for the lion and the bear. He shall be like one of them. And this should be our thinking as people who have an opportunity to make impact, just as God has delivered me from depression, just as God has delivered me from anxiety, so God can blank. It creates a mindset that if God can help me here, then he has all power to help me there. That if he can do this, then he can do that. You can put your problems there and know that God can move. See, it created something in David. He looked at Goliath as every other challenge that God helped him with. See, you've got to look at your struggles in life. Like this, God, if you can help me with this, then this next issue you can help me with. Because you've already helped me before. You've already dealt with me before. You know, I had an anger problem. I don't know if you could tell. Had an anger problem, man. You, I mean, you look at me wrong, it's go. Step on my shoe is definitely go. 
I mean, it, it didn't take much. But yet, listen to me, I'm in church with this. I'm in church with these anger issues. I'm in church with these different things, but yet God had delivered me from immorality. I wasn't looking at pornography no more. I wasn't dibbling and dabbling in those things no more, but yet this anger had a grip on me, and it brought me to a point where I'm like, God, can you deliver me from this? Can you really help me here? And God had to remind me about my lion and bear called pornography. That just as much as I delivered you from this, I can deliver you from that. And it created a mindset that, you know what, I am, don't have to live in this place any longer. Let me help some of you young people. You don't have to live in that place any longer. You don't have to be the way you are any longer. God can help you because he's helped you in times past. Some of you don't believe me. Because the battle is so intense. I can feel it. Some of you are sitting here right now like, yeah, I hear you, but you don't live my life. Yeah, preacher, I understand what you're saying, but you don't have to go home to the home I go to. You don't have to deal with what I deal with, preacher. You don't get it. You're right. I don't. I don't have to go where you go. But, oh, I have a God in heaven that goes where you go. I have a God in heaven that knows. I have a God in heaven that can heal. I have a God in heaven that knows all the things that you go through. So it's not about what people don't know and what people, it's about what God can do. Can you say amen? And it created this mindset in David. God, if I can slay these lions and these bears, he is just like one of them, Goliath is, and I shall slay him as well. See, David didn't look at Goliath as some unbeatable giant to, because of the confidence that he had in his Savior. But he looked at it as another victory in the name of God. Listen to me, is that your mindset? Is that how you view issues and circumstances? Just another, amen, place where God can move. Just another place where God can show me his power. Just another place where God can show me how big he really is. Just another place to show me his strength. Just another place. Listen, church, I've struggled, man. I have struggled to the point where I wanted to leave the church. Oh, my gosh, are you serious? Yes. Struggled to the point where I didn't want this no more. Struggled. But I realized it was my mindset. Because I wasn't viewing my struggle as God can. I was looking at it as impossible. Impossible. And that's what happened to the armies of God. They looked at Goliath as impossible. There's no way we can beat him. Look how big he is. Look at his sword. Look at his shield. Look at him. We can't defeat this. Look at this, man. We, we can't preach Jesus in our high schools. Look, look what's happening. We can't proclaim the name of Christ. Look. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Wrong mindset. No, we have a confidence in Christ. Because the times we have preached, we've seen God move. Come on, somebody. The times we have proclaimed his name, we found favor. Come on, somebody. And in that, amen, that should be your confidence. Right there. We should look at it as just another building block to my faith. The same God that helped me in the dark times that nobody saw will help me in the light of adversities when everybody can see See, those private victories build towards having public victories. Malachi 3 and 6. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, children of Jacob are not consumed. I have not changed. Do you believe it's the same God? Confidence is built from victories. Perspective changes from those private encounters with God. David went from animals to giants. But with the same God confidence, God can. Can I inject something real quick? 
often God will show himself in private to prepare you for the public. The times that God has really spoken to me is when nobody was around. Can I be honest with you? The times that God has really dealt with me, it wasn't at an altar. The times that God has really got down to the nitty gritty of my life, oftentimes it was when nobody was around and I was just sitting there trying to eat some cereal. You with me? And here comes God. Oh, we got to deal with some stuff, Bubba. That's what he calls me. private breakthrough. It was for them in their jail cells as they were singing hymns, as they were worshiping. It was for them and in that private breakthrough, amen, publicly another man breaks through. Do you see what I'm saying? Is that in order for the Philippian jailer to find Jesus, these men had to have a private breakthrough. That God, I'm going to break you through here so you can reach them over there. I'm going to impact you here so that you can reach them over there. The reason why we're having this conference is not so you know, some of y'all can fall asleep. Yeah, I said it. Some of you are like about to knock out. The reason for the conference is not for you to fall asleep. Because I wonder if the ones falling asleep are the ones that need breakthrough. What you going to do, fight me? Your breakthrough could be somebody else's breakthrough. This Philippian jailer and his household were saved because of somebody being privately impacted. The reason why God wants to privately impact you because he wants you to make impact in your schools, in your neighborhoods, among your generation. He wants you to make impact with them. But if you're going to have public impact, it first has to start privately. Privately. And when we have these impacts, it creates a confidence in the power of God. Understanding the power of God comes from times which you have seen him move personally in your life. Romans 1.15. So I'm eager to preach the gospel to you also uh, who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You feel the confidence in which Paul is speaking. Why? Because on that Damascus road, he was impacted. He was knocked off the high horse. He was sought by God. He was touched by God. And he changed. His everything changed for him. He was impacted. So when he wrote this to the Romans, he was saying, listen, there's a confidence. It's the power of God. It can change lives. It saves because of his private impact. It created a confidence that this is the gospel is what they need. They don't need more programs. They don't need more whack TV shows. They need the gospel, but there has to be impacted youth that will give the youth the gospel. Can I ask you a question, church? 
Have you been impacted? Now listen, it's easy to go, yes, I have. Yes, yes, Pastor. No, 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 let me come down a step. Have you really been impacted? I, I, I'm not talking about that you come here. You know, I love Spring Lake. This is like my second, third home. I, I love when I come down here. I feel at home. I argue with a few people that I always argue with. <laughs> fight a few people that I always fight with. It's beautiful. I love it. And you know what? And that's the atmosphere. And you can come in here and love that atmosphere. I love being here. My question to you is not do you love being here. My question to you is not are you involved in ministry. That means nothing to me. A lot of people involved in ministry that aren't impacted. My question to you is, are you been really impacted by the gospel to the point where you can't help but tell somebody, to the point where you want God to be glorified, to the point where you are going God to move in whatever situation that you've been so impacted that you're begging God, please God, impact somewhere in my life, impact somebody that's around me. Have you really been impacted privately? You know, I so appreciate my son's honesty, both of them about being preacher's kids. But I would tell them, hey, bro, I'm going to heaven. Hey, little homie, I'm going to heaven. As far as I know, your mother's going there, too. <laughs> your mom is going there, too. And up, up to this point right now, I'm pretty sure she's going too. But that's us, dog. Not that. That's us. But what about us? I don't know. Not sure. Because, yeah, you, you can play the game, but I see other things in your life. And I would tell, you can ask, I'd tell them, bro, you're not saved. You're not saved, dog. You haven't been impacted. Why do you say that? Because of your life. But then I saw a change when they did get saved. And when I saw them repent and I, and I saw the change, I said, no, now you've been impacted. Something is different now. Because now you're telling me about Christ. and me, I'm not telling you. you telling me. Man, God, Dad, God can do some things. I'm like, he sure can. Man, Dad, Dad, God is awesome, Dad. That's what I'm talking about, boy. You telling me stuff now. That's what, that's what impact does. You don't have to be prompted any longer. You don't have to be pushed to come to church. Now you have to be in church because you got to hear the word of God. That's what impact privately does. It makes you crave the things of God. And then when you've been privately impacted at church, it has to begin to flow out publicly. Is what I want to get to now. Lastly, the impact. Remember, private impact, impact then makes a path for public impact. If we look at our main text and we jump down to verse 52, the Bible tells us this, and the men of Israel and Judah rose with a shout and pursued the Philistines. This is after David killed Goliath and pursued the Philistines as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron so that, they, so that the wounded Philistines fell on the way from that place as far as Gath and Ekron. And the people of Israel came back from chasing the Philistines and they plundered the camp. So think about the impact made on the army from David's private impact. Men trained for battle, men who have fought in times past, run scared for their lives. But David, when he stands and battles and they see the victory, it turned the heart of the whole army. Because of the lion and the bears that he faced already. So then when he fought Goliath, it was nothing to him because he knew God was going to move. But then when he did that, he impacted a whole army. 
because they saw the God of heaven move. Can you say amen? And this is what happens in your lives. And this can what can happen in your lives is that you can make an impact like this in your schools, in your neighborhoods, around the way people you know that when they see you live for God, you can change them and change their hearts towards God. He made an impact on an army. <laughs> One man. You can bring hope back to a people that are hopeless. Listen to me, folks. Listen, I, you know, I, I'm old young. You know what I mean? I'm old young. I'm old enough to be old, but I'm not that old to not be that old. Y'all caught that? I'm old enough to be old, but I'm not old enough to be that old. Contrary to popular belief. (laughs) But I see the hopelessness in this generation. I see the hopeless. They're hopeless. They're aimless. They're all searching. They think, if I get the right sneakers, if I get the right nails, if I get the right clothes, if I have the right makeup, if I have the right haircut, if I get through this and I get that, then, and when they get all of it, they find they're still empty. They find that it's not enough. Well, you know what? If, 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 if I go get this girlfriend and boyfriend, and we, then that'll fill me. And then when they get that, still empty. What they need is hope from an impacted generation. David was able to turn an army to hope from hopeless. You can bring restoration to a broken people. How do I know this? Nehemiah 2 and 12. Then I arose in the night. This is Nehemiah speaking. Then I arose in the night, I and a few men with me, and I told no one, of what God had put in my heart. I told nobody what God did to me privately. For Jerusalem. Jump down. What God had put in Nehemiah privately. Look at Nehemiah 6.15. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of the month of Elul. In 52 days. Verse 16 is key. And when all our enemies heard of it, uh, all the nations around us were afraid, afraid and fell greatly on their own esteem. And they perceived that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. These nations that mocked, these nations that laughed, these same nations that said, we're going to get you. We're, here's no way you're going to rebuild Jerusalem. All these nations now in fear, amen, and have been impacted through the hands of one man because he was impacted privately. Come on, somebody. David saw the armies gain their voice again. The Bible tells us that when David killed Goliath, that they let out a shout, a war cry. And begin to battle again. You can help people who have lost their war cry. Who have lost the battle. Who aren't able to fight. That you who have been impacted can impact them. And see them revived. People who have been hit so hard by different things. That you can make impact for them. You can impact their life. You can show them hope. David also saw the people pursue, verse 53 of our main text. And the people of Israel came back from chasing. They had a changed mindset, a perception change. We are not the prey, but the hunters. We're no longer the prey any longer. We're no longer the ones being hunted. Oh, no, 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 no. Things have shifted. We are now the hunters. We are now going after it. In other words, we don't have to wait for hell to hit us. We now go hit hell. Come on, somebody. We don't wait for hell. Oh, hell. No, no, no. We get in the ring first. Where hell at? Where they at? Tonight. 
I'm not looking for religious teenagers. God is looking for impacted ones that start doing the pursuing, that start going after it, that realize that, no, we too have a part to play in the kingdom of God. We too have a part to play in seeing God move. We too have a part to play in seeing the glorification of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Think about this. David changed an army's whole mindset because of what happened to him privately. They were able to regain their dominion, their control. They realize we don't have to fall to the pressures of the enemy any longer or this culture. We don't have to fall to the pressures of the culture. We can now change the culture. Did you hear what I said? Change the culture. Not assimilate. Huh? Not assimilate. Well, this is what everybody else does, so this is what I'm going to do. No. You change the culture. You know, when I talk to my sons, I talk to them like grown men. And I'm like, hey, fellas, you know it would be swell if you really just went out there and, oh, I don't know, just give it the good old college try and, and let's just see, bro. It's not how I talk. I go, hey, bro, let me tell you something. You get out there, you get after it, dog. Go get you some. And what that means is, man, we ain't, we ain't scared. We know, oh, what's going to happen? No, go get it, bro. Go witness like you've never witnessed before. Go tell them of Jesus. Go, glory, go get you some. That's exactly what the armies did. They said, wait a minute, we ain't got to run no more? Wait a minute, he killed Goliath. You realize that Goliath had four other brothers, right? <laughs> Remember, he gathered five smooth stones because there were four more outside of Goliath. So think about this. They were now chasing the giants. The biggest thing they were fearful of now, they have confidence that God can move because of a man who was impacted. Do you see the impact that you can make? No, 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 listen to me, I'm closing. Do you really see it? Or are you just here? Can we be real? Some of you are just here. You're just here. And that's okay, we thank God you're here. But don't leave here the same way you came in. Leave with a new mindset that, hey, I can make impact. I can do something for God. I, I can see people, I can see things change around me. My question to you, and I'm going to leave you alone because I can feel like some of y'all are ready to fight. But I'm ready too. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to get that out of the way right now. I'm from Newport News. <laughs> We don't play that. <laughs> Norfolk know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Are you ready to make impact? Are you ready to make impact? But listen to me. Are you ready to be impacted? Are you ready for God to deal with you? Are you ready for God to deal with your heart and your issues and your terrible mindset and your bad attitude so that he can use you to restore people, so that he can use you to change a culture that says take pills and die? How many of you know friends right now just taking pills? Come on.
Listen. If you're ever going to make public impact, it's going to start with how much God has impacted you. Bottom line. But if you do that, if you let God deal with you, listen, you can see people touched and saved. Young ladies, young women, um, young men, listen to me. Please, if you listen to me, listen, because this is not a joke, man. Some of you are going back home and hell is waiting for you. Waiting. Waiting to break you down. Waiting to destroy what happened here. But those who have been impacted, hell can't destroy that. You, 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 hell can't destroy that. Because we've been impacted by it. We know that God is who he says he is because we've been impacted by it. I know who he is. I know what he's done. You can't take that away. You can't, you can't make that as if it wasn't. And so because of that, no matter what hell does, no matter what hell does, I know that God can use me to touch somebody else. This afternoon, let your life be impacted privately first. And then once you're impacted privately, pour that out publicly. And if you do that, by this time next year, oh my gosh, we're going to have to rent a center to hold what God did. If you do that, oh my gosh, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to do this. We're going to have to live stream it. We're going to have to get the people in Australia, get their time. I mean, it's going to explode. And I'm not just saying that. The, I'm, I'm, I mean that. You want to make impact? I'm asking you. You want to make impact? You want to see people saved? You want to see your generation touched? Then first, you got to be touched. Can you say amen? Let's bow our heads.